Well, I'm Chris Rogers. I'm the founder of San Diego Orthobiologics Medical Group located in Carlsbad. And uh, I'm board certified in physical medicine and rehabilitation as well as regenerative medicine. And today I'm going to talk about a innovative therapy called shockwave therapy, which uh, we have used in our clinic now for several years. Essentially, extracorporeal shockwave therapy, also known as ESWT, uh, is a non-invasive and evidence-based treatment option for common musculoskeletal conditions. It essentially uses sound waves to decrease pain and inflammation in joints and tendons uh, and accelerates uh, tissue healing. Shock waves are generated outside the body in this device that you see here on the left and uh, hence are called extracorporeal and then uh, transmitted into the tissues and into the cell nucleus. Shockwave's been around for a long time. The technology was originally developed in Germany in the 1980s uh, for the treatment of kidney stones. And on the left there, you see that large water tub that patients had to climb into to have the sound waves transmitted into their kidney stones. The first use of orthopedics began in 1990 in Europe and was uh, first became approved by the US FDA uh, for plantar fasciitis in 2000. Now shockwave, uh, as you can see, uh, covers a range of intensity levels. The energy level at the higher levels is used for fragmenting kidney stones, also known as lithotripsy. But at the lower levels, it can be used to stimulate cellular regeneration and to decrease tissue pain. And there are several different devices that are now FDA approved. Um, the one on the left is commonly seen in physical therapy clinics or chiropractor clinics, and that's a radial pressure wave. And it produces a sound wave that penetrates approximately one inch into the body. On the right, you see what's called focus shock wave. This is a higher energy device that can transmit beyond one inch, probably up to about two to three inches into the body, which is useful for deeper tissues such as the hip or lower back. Uh, for stimulating tissue healing. Common indications for shockwave therapy include injuries to the tendon. So we see a lot of patients who have rotator cuff tendon tears. Uh, they may have elbow pain known as tennis elbow or golfer's elbow. They may have pain in the knee or ankle, uh, the patellar tendon, the Achilles tendon. Uh, many patients who think that they have uh, hip bursitis or gluteal bursitis trochanteric bursitis, uh, actually have tendon tears in the gluteal tendons, uh, making it difficult for them to sleep on their side or to walk upstairs. Uh, and shockwave's been shown to be helpful for that. And then of course, plantar fasciitis, also known as plantar fasciosis, uh, which involves pain on the heel, was the first medical indication for shockwave therapy. One of the things that got me excited about shockwave was uh, many of our patients with severe bone-on-bone -bone osteoarthritis have edema in the bone. So because the cartilage has worn so thin, the bone becomes bruised. Uh, you can see that on MRI. And shockwave has been shown to reduce the edema within the bone, which reduces the pain. It's also been used for fractures that have difficulty healing or skin wounds, such as in diabetic ulcers that have difficulty healing. Uh, and then in the low back as well, patients with uh, non-specific low back pain or specifically evidence of disc degeneration on MRI have shown benefit with the use of shockwave therapy. And then finally, most of us have some form of muscle pain at some point in our life associated with all these other conditions and shockwave has been shown to be very helpful for relaxing uh, muscle pain. Essentially the way that shockwave works is we're transmitting a sound wave deep into the body. And this produces a mechanical stimulus of the tissue known as mechanotransduction. So we're transmitting sound waves to the cell membrane. It is transported through the cell, uh, what's called the cytoskeletal structures, to the cell nucleus, where it can activate genes in the DNA to upregulate proteins uh, secretion, which essentially translates to tissue regeneration, but also manufacturing of molecules that have shown to be anti-inflammatory. And so shockwave is essentially a biological therapeutic, which uh, does promote cellular healing. I always say there's the feel better and then there's the get better. So this does help people to feel better, but it does so by 
promoting healing. And the two primary mechanisms, as I just said, are mechanical stimulation and cellular stimulation. So with mechanical stimulation, we see decreased, le decreased levels of neurotransmitters that are responsible for the production of pain, improved blood supply, but not just improved circulation, actual angiogenesis, new blood vessel formation in tissues that traditionally have difficulty getting good blood flow, such as a tendon or a ligament. As I mentioned, it can cause muscle relaxation, and then there's this pain relief that occurs by stimulating the peripheral nerve fibers. For cellular stimulation, not only do we see improvement in new blood vessel formation, but we see the release of growth factors that are known to cause tissue healing, as well as activating stem cells, decreasing inflammation, inhibiting fibrosis of tissues, and production of collagen synthesis. Of course, collagen is the protein that's important for regenerating bone, tendon, ligament, and cartilage. In this um, uh, review article, we can see that there's a benefit specifically for patients with knee osteoarthritis. And with knee osteoarthritis, we have this chronic inflammatory condition with degeneration of the cartilage and shockwave has been shown to cause proliferation of these cartilage cells known as chondrocytes. Also, uh, there's a positive impact on the bone, what's called the subchondral bone, the bone that supports the cartilage by increasing osteocyte activity and decreasing the bone spurs or osteophytes. And there's a decrease in pain that occurs when using shockwave for neosarthritis by uh, decreasing sensory nerve fiber activity in the bone and alleviating the chronic inflammation in the joint. Uh, in this meta-analysis of randomized clinical trials, so this is a review of multiple uh, 29 randomized clinical trials showing that shockwave overall shows a positive benefit on the pain and function for tendinopathies of the lower extremities. So patellar tendinitis in the knee, Achilles tendinosis in the ankle, uh, and plantar fasciosis in the foot. Uh, the shockwave type and dose does contribute to different outcomes in terms of efficacy, where we show that the higher uh, dosage focused shockwave, that device that I showed you, that it can only be used in a physician supervised manner, not in a chiropractor's office and not in a physical therapist's office, uh, does show better efficacy than the lower dosage radial uh, shockwave devices. Overall, these devices are safe without evidence of serious complications. Uh, we do see some occasional reddening of the skin. Uh, rarely do we see some bruising or swelling transiently after the treatment, but the treatment is very well tolerated. In this study, we have a double-blind randomized clinical trial uh, performed in uh, 2021 where a physical therapy program was compared to shockwave, uh, with shockwave was compared to physical therapy program with sham shockwave, so not actually receiving shockwave therapy, but the patient is blinded as to which therapy they uh, received for their Achilles tendinopathy. And these patients were followed for over one year. And, sh and it was shown that adding shockwave to the exercise protocol significantly improved both the short-term and the long-term benefits in these patients with Achilles tendinopathy. Uh, in this study, 45 patients with calcific tendinopathy of the rotator cuff tendon, and you can see it there on the x-ray of the shoulder in the red circle, you see the calcium deposit in the tendon. This is something that we see commonly in our practice. Uh, 45 patients were randomized into three groups. They either received the focus shockwave device therapy protocol, a radial shockwave protocol, or the third group, which received both radial and focus sho shockwave. In all groups, did show improvement in pain, improvements in range of motion and function at the end uh, of the treatment, uh, which typically lasts four weeks, and then at the three-month follow-up time period. There was a significant reduction in the size of the calcium deposit as seen on ultrasound imaging, uh, with the largest reductions in the calcium deposit being seen in those patients that received both focused and radial shockwave. So our protocol for patients with calcific tendinopathy in the rotator cuff tendon uh, receive both focused and radial shock wave. And as I mentioned, the focus can only be uh, performed in a physician supervised setting. Now, this is a ultrasound uh, uh, image here on the right showing the before and after 
uh, effects of using high energy ultrasound. And so we had 42 patients who received either physical therapy or physical therapy plus shockwave. And again, the patients who received the high energy shockwave therapy were found to be more effective for the treatment of calcific rotator cuff tendinopathy with decreases in size of the calcium deposit and improved pain function and overall quality of life. Now, I told you one of the most exciting things that we've discovered in the past few years is that shockwave therapy can be useful for healing bone tissue. There are patients who have uh, uh, bone lesions that do not heal. They may have had a fracture and for various reasons, the fracture is not healing. In this case, we have a patient with severe knee osteoarthritis. You're looking at an MRI. Uh, uh, the red arrow is pointing to a white bruise within the bone marrow. So typically bone marrow will be gray, dark gray on the MRI. And in this case, you can see the edema within the bone. There are many nerve fibers within your thigh bone. And when there's no cartilage uh, to cushion the bone, it becomes bruised and painful. And this is where much of the pain from knee osteoarthritis will come from. Uh, in the past, these conditions were treated with uh, prostacyclin intravenously or biphosphonates. These are drugs that have been used for bone marrow lesions. And this was compared to shockwave therapy. And it was shown that the shockwave therapy group had better improvement in both pain and function with resolution of the bone marrow edema at six month follow-up. So you can see that MRI on the right showing that that white bruised area of the bone has completely resolved with the use of shockwave therapy. So this is important because we treat many patients with knee osteoarthritis by injecting cells into the knee joint. So we might inject platelets from the blood or stem cells from fat or bone marrow but those go directly into the joint. It doesn't necessarily get into the bone and you have to treat both the joint and the bone to get a successful outcome. Many clinics will drill into the bone and inject bone marrow cells or platelet cells into the bone in an attempt to heal the bone. However, we can use this non-invasive therapy, shockwave therapy to get a similar result. Now we track our outcomes uh, because these are still considered investigational therapies. Although it is an FDA approved device, the therapy is still considered investigational. And so we track all our patients in a registry that uh, I and two other physicians developed called Data Biologics. And we now have more than 300 doctors around the world who use this registry data to track their outcomes, not only with shockwave, but with platelet-rich plasma and other cell-based treatments uh, to see how safe and effective the treatment actually is. In this case, I queried the database and found over 900 cases who had been treated with shockwave therapy who had at least a two-year follow-up data in the database. And basically, we can see here in the middle of the graph a decrease in the pain scores uh, that is maintained out to 24-month follow-up. Now, we can query the database uh, based on the patient's age, their diagnosis, and the severity of their condition. So when you come into our office, we will uh, compare you to the database to give you a better idea of what kind of outcome you can expect from shockwave therapy or any of the other therapies that we offer so that both the physician and the patient can make an informed medical decision. And this is where the treatment occurs. I call it the sound spa because not only can you get shockwave in this office, but you can also get manual therapies uh, and massage therapy. Um, typically shockwave therapy uh, will last about 20 minutes. It is not a painful experience, but we can increase the intensity to get a more robust response if the patient can tolerate it. Uh, and generally the patient will receive a, one session per week for four weeks uh, if the condition is subacute. If it's more chronic, meaning that the patient has had symptoms for more than three to six months, then they may need more than four visits to get a successful outcome. And as I mentioned, it can be combined with other treatments such as massage, physical therapy. Sometimes it would combine it with platelet-rich plasma to improve the rate of healing as well as the overall effectiveness of the therapy. So that's just a quick overview of Shockwave. Um, I'm gonna show you a little more detail from our Shockwave technician, Vanessa, who will talk to you about the benefits. Hi, my name is Vanessa and I am the shockwave therapist here at San Diego Orthobiologics Medical Group. Shockwaves sound scary, but they're not. They are acoustic sound waves that penetrate the body 
um, penetrate the cytoskeleton, the nucleus, and have an effect on your gene expression. The benefits of shockwave is achieved through a process called mechanotransduction, which is turning a mechanical stimulus or signal into an electrical or chemical response. In this case, the result is a physical, biological, and chemical response of the body. In our practice, we use two devices, a radial pressure wave and a focused shock wave. The difference between the two, the radial pressure wave is more superficial, it's better for treating muscle and tendon, and the focused shock wave is able to focus in deeper on a very specific part of the body. Shockwave therapy can be used to avoid surgery. It can be used alone. It can also be used with, uh, in combination with other regenerative medicine techniques such as PRP and stem cells. It can also be used after surgery to help reduce um, inflammation, joint stiffness, and edema. I'm often asked if the procedure is painful and there is some discomfort during treatment, but it will be at your comfort level. And there's some discomfort the couple of days following treatment. We recommend ice and Tylenol to manage your pain. My patients often ask, can they resume their normal physical activity after treatment? And the answer is yes. However, it's like planting seeds. You don't want to go stomping in the flower beds. You can't expect flowers to grow. So we suggest that you take it easy. Complete tissue healing may take up to 12 weeks, but rest assured, you are healing. Thank you for watching this video. If we can help you with any of your non-surgical orthopedic needs, please give us a call at the number listed there or send us an email. If you'd like to learn more about the services we offer, you can go to our website or to the YouTube channel and type in San Diego Orthobiologics to learn more about us. Thank you very much and have a great day.